Thanks, Van. Uh, obviously, a great honor to be here. Um, <clears throat> just growing up in the Southeast and, um, you know, attending a Southeastern Conference school and working uh, in the SEC for seven years. The Sugar Bowl is a huge deal. It's a huge honor. It was always the game that, uh, as a player, a coach, you dream of uh, coaching and or playing in. So, honored to be here. we got a great challenge ahead of us. And, um, but our guys are prepared and looking forward to playing here in a couple days. James Crepia from AL.com. Red, the passing game has struggled this season as a whole, mainly because of Sean's injuries. They're doing very poorly against pass defense. Just how confident are you they're going to be able to take advantage of a very poor pass defense? And how confident are you that Sean will be healthy for this game? Yeah, uh, you know, Sean's practiced the entire bowl prep. Um, you know, I think he's looking uh, pretty good right now. He's had a couple good days the last few days. And um, there's no question when we were playing well in the middle of the year, you know, we had pretty good balanced offensively. Uh, we were very efficient throwing the football. I think uh, right before he got hurt, he was leading the league in pass efficiency, uh, completion percentage, touchdown interception ratio, yards per completion, a lot of good categories. And uh, he got hurt, and, and just as a whole, uh, the last couple games, we were, uh, we were very poor in the passing game. So that's going to have to be something we, uh, we do well in a couple days and just keep the balance that uh, allowed us to, uh, to be successful when we were playing well. Here in the front. Barry Trammell with the Oklahoma. You hey, guys Barry. have signed Jarrett Stidham, which we know well in Big 12 country. Can you talk about uh, going after him, how you got him, what you sold him on, those kinds of things, and how that's affected Sean, uh, an incumbent starter who now is going to like have to fight for his job again? Right. Well, you know, every year you're trying to uh, go out and recruit players to every position. You bring in a new quarterback or two every year, so that's not uncommon. Um, Obviously, Jarrett's someone who's uh, familiar with our style of play, our style of offense, um, back from when he was in high school even to uh, at Baylor. So we thought that was a good fit. Um, just the more we got to know him and recruit him like we do other people, we just thought he was a good fit uh, for what we do in our program. As far as Sean goes, uh, Sean's been great. I mean, Sean has prepared for this game. Sean and all of our players were worried about this game. Uh, every year, again, you're bringing in uh, you know, players at every position. And so every, every year, guys know in the offseason they're competing. Um, I think competition brings out the best in everybody, and I don't think it'll be any different in this scenario. In the back. Uh, Jason Caldwell inside the Auburn hey, Tigers. Red, um, when you look at the health, obviously Sean's health is important, but what difference and, and how big is it to have Cameron Petway and Carrion Johnson both closer to 100% as well? You know, it's huge. I mean, hey, in leagues like the SEC and the Big 12, I mean, you're going to get beat up throughout the year. So injuries are part of it. But, uh, you know, some of our impact players uh, being nicked up late in the season didn't help. And even Carrion Johnson's a guy who played, you know, from that Mississippi State game on, was pretty much banged up most of the year. And uh, we were just talking yesterday, it looked like he's kind of back to full speed and just looking like his old self. So, you know, in a game like this, when you're playing such a, a, um, such a high quality opponent, uh, we're going to have to play extremely well on, on our end of the football. Uh, trying to have all your guys as close to 100% is a big plus. And hopefully then, you know, we've had a couple weeks here to try to regain the momentum and, and kind of the form we had during that six-game six winning streak in the middle of the season. Brett, going back to Jared, just can you speak to his skill set and just what he brought to the table that enticed you, particularly in the passing game? And you touch on how that impacts Sean, but have you spoken to John Franklin about how that impacts him and any position change or anything like that for his future? No, John's playing quarterback, and again, we're going to bring in good players every year. We do think Jarrett fits. Um, you know, his skill set fits what we'd like to do very well, but so do the guys we have. So um, not any disrespect to him. Kind of want to focus on the guys playing in this game because uh, I think they've earned that. Um, but Jarrett, he can obviously throw the football well, throw it vertically down the field. Uh, but he's going to have to come in and earn the respect to his teammates and earn the right to, to, to have a chance to play, just like the guys who are here are going to compete as well. So, um, again, uh, Sean and John and, and all the other quarterbacks, uh, you know, Jarrett was on campus a couple of days during bowl practice, and those guys got along just fine, and there weren't any issues. And, and I expect it to be that way in the spring. In the middle back here. Mark Murphy from Inside the Auburn Tigers. Talk about. Uh, going in against a team that's scoring about 45 points a game, does you feel more pressure as an offensive coordinator to try to keep up? Well, there's no question that what they do offensively is, has been impressive. You know, Lincoln's done a great job, and 
Uh, they put a lot of pressure on you as a whole football team. Uh, and that's why, you know, I say we're going to have to play extremely well. Uh, it's a team game. You know, we got to pick the defense up. They have to pick us up. And uh, the last couple games, we didn't do our part. And so, uh, you know, we do feel like we're healthy. Uh, we feel like we've had good preparation. Um, this Oklahoma defense is a pretty good defense now. They, uh, they do a really good job in their league. They're sound. Um, they do a very good job of mixing up coverages and fronts. Uh, they're very multiple. Um, they've got a player that can really get after the passer. Number 31 uh, is really, really good. He can really affect uh, the game. And so, you know, I think that uh, for us to, uh, to go out and just play our best and be balanced is key for us always. Uh, we can't be one dimensional. We got to be better on third down. You know, going in most of the season, we were one of the top third down teams in our league. The last three games, obviously, we were one of the worst. And so staying on the field, keeping the ball away from them, but obviously giving us a chance to score some points, uh, that's when we were at our best this year. And uh, we got to get more explosive and get back to that balance we had during the middle of the season. Uh, we ran a, a couple of years ago, you, you thought you were going to be in the Sugar Bowl and that Sean and, and Cameron were going to be the two, two guys you, you, you were counting on as much as you are. That probably wouldn't have, wouldn't have been what you expected. Could you just talk about what they've done over these last couple of years to, to kind of put themselves in position they're in. Talking about Sean and, and Petway? Yeah. Yeah, you know, I think Sean's, again, one of those those kids I've said before that has kind of always been uh, a little bit of the underdog. And uh, he's got a great competitive desire, and that's what his guys love about him. And uh, he just keeps coming at you. And so uh, having him out there, I think, uh, you know, gives our guys a shot in the arm just because of his competitiveness. And he's always, any time a challenge has been brought up and people kind of write him off, he usually rises to the occasion. As far as Cameron Petway, you know, we. We recruited him out of Pratt, Alabama. He was a running back. We kind of weren't sure if he'd be a running back and H back. He was a bigger back, and first year he played H back. And then we had some uh, some depth issues going in the season at running back. And we said, let's see what he can do. And uh, I thought Tim Horton, you know, made a comment at the end of the spring. Said, you know, he's going to be just fine. He said he may end up being our best guy. And it wasn't a cut to any of the other guys. And uh, you know, sure enough, about two or three games in the season, you know, he got hot and got rolling. And um, you know, him and him and carry on really complement each other well. But uh, what he's been able to do this year has been, been really phenomenal and, and been a big lift for us. Uh, yeah, Jay Tate, Auburn Sports. Hey, hey Rhett. Uh, nice to meet you. Yeah, how you doing? Uh, some, you did some kind of cool experimentation with some plays this year. I thought the single wing was something we were kind of watching. Yeah. Tell me kind of how you assessed how that all worked <laughs> out. I know you ran some of that in the Iron Bowl, just kind of looking back on that. I think when we um, – we were three games in the season, you know, we were struggling. Uh, I think one thing too is, you know, I think it was a couple games left in the season. At, at one point, 87, 88% of our yards came from freshmen and sophomores this year. So we're a pretty young football team. So those first couple games, we played some really good teams in Clemson and A&M and, and even Arkansas State who won the Sun Belt. And, uh, you know, we weren't really clicking very well at all. And so we were able to kind of step back and, and try to simplify things. Uh, it allowed us to play faster. Uh, maybe not quite as many formations and changes, but uh, allowed our guys to play faster, adjust better on the move, and maybe just play with a little more confidence. And, uh, and probably allowed us to start executing better. Because at the end of the day, it's not about how many plays you have, it's how many plays you can run well. And, and uh, so I think that's why when we started playing well at the middle of the season, um, that was probably the biggest adjustment we made. Um, and, and that kind of took us away from some of the things like the single wing and things like that. Um, but, you know, when we had injuries and things happen towards the end of the year, you know, sometimes you search a little bit to try to help give you guys a better chance to, to be successful. But, um, again, you know, we're just trying to, uh, again, get our guys' confidence to the point where at one point in time we were leading the SEC in total offense, you know, not too long ago. So we've got it in us. We just got to make sure we show up and, and put our best foot forward. Right here in the middle. Coach, uh, Justin McNally with WSFA. Uh, you still have one more game left, but how big is it having a guy like Kim Petway coming back uh, in 2017 for next year? Oh, it's, it's big. It's big uh, anytime you have the SEC's you know, leading rusher in yards per game coming back. And again, uh, he got on a roll and got on a tear. I think he only played really in seven or eight of our games and still had a really, really good year. But um, in our league, you can tell you're going to have to have more than one guy. So, but it's huge. And you just hope that after having one year uh, of playing running back in our league under his belt, have a great off season that, uh, you know, he can even have a better year too. We have time for one more question right back in the back. You know, with all the bowl practice, extra practice back in Auburn, were some of the young guys 
uh, out there stepping up and playing well, and specifically uh, Woody Barrett, how did he do in practice? Yeah, that's one of the best things about the bowl practice, especially when you're at your home site. We had about eight or nine practices there. and Every day the young guys get more reps, get more individual work, um, especially early on in the bowl prep. You're able to scrimmage them and let them play, and, and Woody, Woody did some good things. So we let our young guys play. Woody took predominantly all those reps, and um, you know that's almost like an extra spring ball for those guys. So when you look at we're going to get to uh, the spring here in a couple months, uh, hopefully those you know 10 to 12 extra practices that Woody got, uh, being in our meetings and, and not just being with the scout team and those kind of things the whole time uh, will help speed up the development process for him and a lot of those other younger guys.